Ladies and gentlemen, the sound you hear is a buzz saw ripping through a painting of George Washington chopping down cherry trees. It's time for Professor Buzzkill, busting myths and taking names. You know, Buzzkillers, it's a story that drives tour guides and historians of engineering crazy, but you hear it all the time. A worker falls into a pool of wet concrete that's being poured as part of a major construction project. Before he can be saved, his body slips beneath the surface of the concrete and he drowns in that thick, disgusting soup. Now, pouring concrete's a slow and tedious job, and once the pour has started, it can't be stopped without ruining the whole block, and that section of the plot project would have to be completely redone. So, rather than fish the dead workman out of the concrete pool, construction supervisors and bosses just let the body sink further into the concrete, and the poor workman got entombed forever in the structure he was helping to build. This tale is told of nearly every major concrete structure built in the modern age, and the story almost always contains the same elements. By the way, buzzkillers, having the same elements is usually one of the signs of a widespread urban legend. These elements are the integrity of the concrete pour couldn't be compromised, and two, as tragic as the death of the worker or workers was, Modern industrial age constructions must go on unimpeded. But were the bosses that cold? Was the march of progress so heartless? Many workers died during the construction of highways, bridges, dams, and other major building projects, but there's absolutely no evidence at all that any workers were entombed in poor poured concrete. None. Not in the Brooklyn Bridge, where you hear it, not in the George Westinghouse Bridge in Pittsburgh and not in the Hoover Dam, where the stories are probably most frequent. But, Professor, I hear you saying the bosses and the construction companies would suppress the news of such a tragic and disgusting death in order to keep the building process going, and the, and the information about it, the history of it, would never reach Buzzkill Institute historians. Well, maybe. But that's not the main reason we know that these types of deaths never happen. The main reason is that the structural integrity of, of the concrete itself would have been compromised by having a human body encased in it. Even a massive structure like Hoover Dam would have crumbled and collapsed if there had been a body or even a single shoe in any part of the poured concrete, even after the concrete had hardened. All right, I'm going to get technical on you. I didn't write this, but the Institute researchers did, and they're more expert on it than I am. This is a more detailed, if you will, structural engineering explanation of why this would happen. A human body falling in wet concrete would create air pockets, small ones, big ones. And if the body started to decay for any reason, a large air pocket, roughly six feet by two feet, would, you know, form. That's nothing compared to the size of Hoover Dam or Brooklyn Bridge, you say, you know, two feet by six feet, that's nothing. Well, remember that a major dam is trying to hold back many millions of tons of water. And a bridge has to hold up a very heavy superstructure. The pressure on the concrete blocks in each case would be massive, enormous. An air pocket of any size would create weakness in the integrity of, the, of that specific concrete block. Even a small weakness in one concrete block would cause the block to fail. It would crumble. All the blocks around it would then crumble. And it would result in a cascade of collapse. So it just structurally couldn't happen. The bosses, the owners would be cutting off their nose to spite their face if they tried to leave a worker or, like I say, anything as, even as small as a shoe in the poured concrete. But remember, killers, I said at the beginning that lots of workers were indeed killed on massive construction projects. The death toll at Hoover Dam varies between 96 and 112, depending on which source you consult, somewhere between 20 and 30 workmen were killed while building the Brooklyn Bridge, and that doesn't count the ones who died of, you know, the bends and things like that. And in fact, 12 pedestrians were killed in a panic stampede a week after the bridge opened. Deaths of these major structures included workers falling off bridges, being crushed or mangled by equipment, and sometimes buried under collapsed parts of the construction site. Such was the case at the Fort Peck Dam, built in Montana from 1934 to 1940. In September 38, a section of the still uncompleted dam, which was mostly an earth and boulder dam, it wasn't so much poured concrete, 
uh, it broke away from the rest of the dam, and a massive amount of that earth and a massive number of those boulders buried eight workers as it collapsed down into the lake. Now, recovery work started right away. Two bodies were recovered, but despite all the best efforts, six bodies were never found. So they're entombed, if you will, in the Fort Peck, uh, Fort Peck Dam in Montana. But that's a very, very different case than the entombed in concrete story. So I'm telling you, buzz killers, your great uncle Johnny, who worked on Hoover Dam and died, isn't entombed in the concrete. Your murderous Aunt Nellie killed him and buried him in the backyard. Talk to you next week.